Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use in Battlefield 4. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Sergeant Razai. He says the Rainbow Six Siege Maxim Capkin Basuda Loadout. We'll be playing for Russia. The class is Recon, and we'll be running with an AKU-12 to uh, simulate the 9X19 VSN. Cobra Sight, Laser Sight, Suppressor, and Ergo Grip. Secondary will be the MP443. Also with a Laser Sight and Suppressor, Gadget 1 is C4 to mimic the Nitro Cells. Gadget 2 will be the M18 Claymore to mimic the Booby Traps. And then the comment says no grenade, but it's actually impossible to not equip a grenade in this, so I just left it standard M67. Uh, got a few kills with it, but didn't use it excessively. Field upgrade will be defensive, since Capkin has not only tier three body armor, but he can also use Brooks body armor. These soldiers think the training will keep them alive. They break down doors and come from the windows, weapons drawn, but it's too late. They forgot the first rule of survival. A real hunter always watches where he steps. You must defend the bomb, play rush as defender. Now, the great thing about Battlefield 4 is that there's so many weapons and customizations that it's actually pretty easy to mimic classes from other video games. And in this situation, the Capkin class that we've made here is actually pretty darn effective when playing rush defensively. Obviously claymores are great to place around the MCOM. People are usually rushing towards that MCOM as fast as possible, not watching where they step and it can be an easy way to get a kill. Granted, on rush servers, on PC, most of them are 64 players, so depending on the map there can be so much explosive spam that your claymores just won't survive to the point where somebody actually gets close enough to arm an MCOM. The one thing that does throw me off a little bit is the suppressor on this kit. Some maps it can be useful, but generally speaking, 64 player rush, the attackers know where you're gonna be. There's not too many hiding spots on rush game modes when it gets close to the MCOM. So the suppressor doesn't help out much, especially when you've got tons of teammates around you without the suppressor. In addition to that, I don't prefer to use the suppressor in Rainbow Six Siege. Some people do, but I feel like the damage penalty you get in Rainbow Six Siege just isn't worth it. And likewise in uh, Battlefield 4, the muzzle velocity just isn't worth it for me uh, with the suppressor, unless you're playing like Team Deathmatch and you know you're gonna be engaging people in close quarters. Now the AKU-12 is probably in my top three favorite carbines in this game. I do kind of miss the Woodstock version of this gun from Battlefield 3, and maybe they'll add in a Woodstock version at some point or in a future Battlefield game, but it's a very, very manageable gun. The rate of fire is not crazy. It's 680 rounds per minute, but the side-to-side -side recoil is so low on this weapon that you can be pinpoint accurate with it. It doesn't have incredibly fast muzzle velocity, 500 meters per second, so it's not really designed for extreme long-range engagements, but the accuracy is so good that if you have a stationary target at range, you can absolutely down them before they realize what's going on and try and start dodging your shots. Now the laser sight can be fun for hip fire and especially while using the ergo grip and laser sight, you've got a pretty decent hip fire weapon. You just gotta be careful now when people are throwing smoke grenades to turn off that laser sight. Or if you're not in a close quarter situation, turn it off. Turn it on when you need it, but turn it off, especially when you're not using it. And I kind of wish that this game had the option to set your laser sights or flashlights in the off mode by default, and that way you could turn them on when you wanted them rather than spawning with them on because I think they just give away your position too much. And when those smoke grenades go down and you've got a laser sight on, it's basically just like having a, a red triangle over your head. It, it's like, hey, look at me, I'm right here. Shoot the red dot coming through the smoke and you will get a kill. Now through my career as a YouTuber and just gamer in general, I've uh, become quite a fan of Russian weapons and video games. And the more I find out about them in real life, the more I've come to respect and appreciate them. Their durability and efficiency at such a low price point for manufacturing is just an incredible like, feet in gun technology and gun 
uh, engineering. I mean, the AKs have always been known for their reliability, which is something, unfortunately, that doesn't come across in video games. And I say unfortunately, but for the most part, if we had video games where your weapons jammed, I think people would get really annoyed and frustrated. And I am certainly not advocating doing that, but it's one of those things that is a much more important factor in real life. Obviously, if your weapon jams in real life, it's a life or death situation, you're screwed, like you can't have that. So reliability is a much more important factor. Plus, in video games, you're not getting sand and dirt and mud in your weapons. We're not really simulating that right now. Um, and in real life, it's a big problem, you know? Soldiers are often fighting in less than ideal environments where guns and gear gets very, very dirty. And you have to have something that can handle that. And the AK has always been good at that. All right, but enough of my love affair with Russian design weapons. The AKU-12 and this loadout has been very, very effective when playing defensively on Rush games. Because when you play defensively and you have a good aggressive offensive team that's actually getting close to those MCOMs, you can make very good use of this loadout. Draw people into close quarters so your suppressor isn't at a disadvantage at those long range firefights. Um, and then especially when playing on nighttime maps, which you'll see a little bit of here in a second, uh, it was very useful for keeping me off of the mini map and people just weren't able to locate me. However, I did have to keep the laser sight off pretty much non-stop in the night maps. It's just like a big red beacon telling everybody where you are if you have it on. Every now and then I would get a Claymore kill, but I have to say most of them were getting blown up uh, before they ever had a chance to kill anyone. Again, when you're playing Rush on, on PC, you don't have the option of picking a lot of 32 player Rush servers. In fact, I can't remember the last time I played 32 player Rush because it's all 64 player Rush on PC. So the explosive spam is just through the roof. Everybody's got like four grenades and rockets and grenade launchers and whatever. So your claymores are likely gonna take a little bit of splash damage at some point, which will just set them off. So if you get a claymore kill, it might not be next to the MCOM. You might have to like hide it in a little building or something where you don't expect people to be as frequently or just put it right out in the open where uh, people aren't gonna be throwing grenades as much. Now, the one thing that I feel like loadout doesn't really touch on as much is that it's important to remember to keep your soldier or your class adaptable depending on the map you're playing. I mentioned that I don't really like the suppressor as much, but when I'm playing on a night map as I am here, then the suppressor is absolutely great. Not only does it hide your muzzle flash, so it doesn't give away your position that way, but it keeps you off that mini map and on night maps where people are relying almost 100% on mini map or 3D spotting, it is incredibly useful. The one weak area of the AKU in this game is its rate of fire, 680 rounds per minute. It's not bad, but it's not gonna out damage a huge portion of the guns that people love to use in this game that shoot over uh, 800 rounds per minute. And those can be tough to go up against, especially in close quarters. So just be aware of that and use hip fire whenever you can. As always guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments for the next episode of Loadout and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.